you're traveling through another dimension. A dimension of not only a film and sound, but mind. A journey into an auditory movie review adventure that must be experienced to be believed. There's a signpost up ahead. Your next stop. The Doomsday Clock. Yeah! Which versus the Doomsday Clock? Week 90, 1 hour 45 minutes to Doomsday. All right, perhaps I've watched like four lots of different movies, supposedly about summer holidays, none of which have been about summer holidays. Can I just have a little bit of peace and quiet? A lake, maybe do some fishing, a bit of quiet relaxation. Can you do that? I am tired of trying to work out what it is that you actually want. I will find a movie and guest based on a most used word search from the last 89 episodes. Piranha 3 Double D, 2012. Having awoken from their spring break extravaganza at Lake Victoria, the swarm heads upstream where they look to make a meal out of a local water park, where when it comes to fun, nobody does it wetter. Let's party! In the world's wildest water park, the party has never been hotter. Tell me you did not replace our old lifeguards with strippers. Water certified strippers. And the guests have never been hungrier. Mommy, I got bit. It was a piranha. It was not a piranha. We think they're back. These piranha spent eons in underground lakes and rivers. So fish can become confused and try to enter man-made drainage systems. <laughs> Is that you? Whatever it is, I don't like it. Ladies and gentlemen, the most famous lifeguard of all time. Let's all get wet and wild. There's something in the water. Just when you thought it was safe. People are dying. Do something. To put your 3D glasses back on. First of all, I'm not a lifeguard. Never was. Secondly, that is what natural selection is all about. It's double the action. Something is wrong with me. What did you do to me? Double the terror. And double the D's. Bring me my legs. Piranha 3 Double D. Alright, not quite what I had in mind. And of course, you've brought someone to share, share time with me, and it is the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Bo Ransdell. First off, I need to say, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I here I am, sitting at my home. Like like a decent human being, all of a sudden I'm I'm whirling through space and time, on, only to watch one of the shittiest movies I've ever seen, <laughs> the in flight movie uh for for light speed. It turns out is a Patrick is... Melton and Marcus Dunstan joint, and that is never going to do anybody any good. No, no, it's not going to help anybody. And of course, Bo has endured 2012's Piranha Three Double D. I, I, I can't even remember how long this movie ran for. It seemed like a really, really long oh. time. <laughs> Would you like me to tell you? Because I've got it down to the, not to the second, but to the minute. Because oh, pl- please tell me. <laughs> it's an hour 22 is the runtime. The credit. Uh, it, it felt longer. <laughs> the credits begin, though, at an hour seven. 
An hour and seven? Really? Yeah. Was it that long? No, I'm sorry. It's an hour and 15. There are seven minutes of credits in this movie. Yes. In seven between. minutes of credits. Yeah. The, and, and bloopers. Right. Outtakes. Shots of David Hasselhoff running on a beach. Just some B-roll of the pretty ladies floating on the water. Uh, whatever we got laying around in the editing room. <laughs> that is going yeah. to pad the runtime of our credits. We got we to uh-huh. get this to feature length, people. Yeah, it had to be at least 80 minutes. So Someone, I reckon, in production said, it's got to be 80 minutes, at least. You can't tell me you can't run a movie with boobs and kill a fish and not make it 80 minutes. And they went, uh, uh maybe? And uh, you know what? I think that seven minutes is possibly the best seven minutes of the entire movie. It's the most watchable, yes. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it makes the most sense. <laughs> well, you know what? I'd watch Fish Hunter. <laughs> Yeah, well, this movie, like, it kicks you in the dick right away with that yeah. really terrible Gary Busey, Clue Gulager scene. Oh, Gary Busey. Crazy Gary Busey. Cra- you know what? Before before we talk about Crazy oh, yeah, Gary sorry. and Bolivia, I, I, I need to talk about Crazy Gary. We should really name and shame the people responsible for this travesty. Please. This movie... <laughs> This movie was directed by John Gulliger, best known for directing 2018's Children of the Corn Runaway, 2008's Feast 2 Sloppy Seconds, 2009's Feast 3 Happy Finish, and as the cinematographer on 2005's documentary Wonder Porn Star Pets. You know, uh, like I watched the, uh, what was it, Project Greenlight? Is that what it was called? The uh, Yes, yeah, with Affleck and, and um, Matt, Matt Damon. Damon. Yeah, and they, and they yeah, did yeah. Feast was a, a Project Greenlight movie. And so I was sort of more intel- intimately familiar with John Gulliger than anyone should be. Because he's not a very good yeah, director. Yes. <laughs> well, clearly. <laughs> and... I would also say I'll have to I'll have to see who's responsible for this. This is also one of the shittiest jobs of editing I've seen in a movie yeah. in some time. It is a really uh, editing was done by Martin Bern, Bernfeld, Devin Lucier, and Kirk Morey. And I don't know, maybe the fact that there were three people editing explains it. But this movie, yeah, yeah. is. Like, there are cuts away and back, and you're just like, why did we cut away there? That is the craziest yeah, yeah. fucking shot. Like, you're in the middle of a conversation. Also, the like, do you remember there's that overhead shot of David Koechner? And in the middle of him yeah. walking out onto the platform in this overhead shot of him, it cuts to, like, Daniel Pennebaker, and then immediately cuts back to the the overhead shot. And you're like, yes, no, no, for no, no reason, right? Like, no, we don't need to see her react to him walking out. The point of the shot is him, the it's the overhead shot. Like, that's kind of cool. It's him yeah. being the king of the water park. Like, there, <laughs> I hate to try to explain to a movie how movies work, but <laughs> no, no, you know what? It's the only way they're gonna learn. <laughs> you're right, but but the reason that you keep that single shot is because you're paint like. Within a scene, within even a single shot, you are telling your own little story. That's how movies mm. work. You know, a scene is sort of this little microcosm of the film. And and c- this cutaway to Daniel Panabaker does nothing. It like, because she's kind of expressionless. So you're just cutting to her, watching him walk out on stage, as opposed to the cool overhead shot that makes him feel like a big character that we should care about and follow. And uh, it's just... And yet we never do. (laughs) Right. It's just one of those things where you're like, oh, no, they're not getting the fundamentals right. You know? It's it's like the reverse WNBA, you know? (laughs) Where for a long time, everyone was like, yeah, 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 but at least all the fundamentals are great. This movie can't do that. It can't it can't work it, it can't make a scene work visually in a coherent way much less tell a story. And I feel like I'm giving this really grand complaint about a movie that is just trash. Yes, yes it is. But you know what sometimes sometimes you can you can look at something and go if it was me I would have done this and made it so much better. Um, but I think realistically, th- this movie was just distracted by boobs. It was just like, hey, that's right, we got like lots of naked women. Um, we should put them in this movie. 
because we paid for them. They're here. They're they're not shy. Um, right. and, and we have. You know, we, we, we have them, we've paid... You know what, it's a bit like a hooker. You paid your money, you might as well have a go. Um, I gotta go to the bathroom, the start clapping. <laughs> That's exactly it. It's, it's, I don't know, sing me a song, read me a story. No, well, no, you, you, you know why you make a, a prostitute clap when you leave the room. It's so she can't go through your wallet. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, the voice of experience. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to help others. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, you know, you've tried to help the movie. Clearly, they didn't listen. Um, now, someone that didn't listen, I think, is Daddy L. Panabaker because uh, playing Maddie in this movie was just a mistake. Just a, an absolute fucking mistake. She looks pissed off the entire time <laughs> and, and just awkward and, and just like clearly she said you know what there is no chance of me being nude right up front not gonna do it which you know what more power to it mm-hmm. um because she didn't need to she was allegedly the star of the movie but oh my god i i just get the feeling that she got on set and just went i've already spent the money fuck well and i think yeah th- these contracts are pretty airtight <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I get the feeling, or I, I like to believe that she looked at the first movie that before she ever saw a script for this one or anything, she saw the first movie or heard about the first movie and coming out of that, it was like, you know what? It was campy, but it was fun. Jerry O'Connell got mm-hmm. a lot of credit for being in that movie and being kind of ridiculous and silly. And so there is an argument to be made. That like, oh, hey, you're yeah. going to be in the sequel to what was a kind of surprise hit. And yeah. and I wonder if she signed on to it, like contracted to it, and then it like the bottom fell out of it. And it was like, <laughs> oh, it's not going to be Patrick Lussier anymore. It's going to be John Gulliger. And she's like, who? Who the, who the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah, who? <laughs> he did all the... Yeah, and it, uh, he did the Feast movies. What the fuck is a Feast movie? Yeah, you know, Children of the Corn? No, he, he did the latest Children of the Corn. It's going to be great. Uh, <laughs> right. the, if you say, like, the latest Children of the Corn, you are in rough territory. Like, oh, it's yeah, like saying, like, I, that's a- you know, I was, uh, he directed the latest Tremors movie. <laughs> yeah. Or even, you know what? He, 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 oh, blah, blah, blah. he directed the reboot of the Trances series. Oh, man. Boy, you got to get somebody special for that. That that movie is too near and dear to my heart. Don't fuck that up. Oh, yeah, yeah, but you know what? By the time you get to number six, Tim Thomas and even looks fucking bored. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm saying like it's Helen Hunt or bust for a Transfers yeah. movie. Oh. Yeah, Helen Hunt with blue, with a blue streak. Mm-hmm. Fuck everything else. Yeah, I I remember like when she popped up and like as good as it gets and stuff. I my stupid brain is still like, oh, the girl from Trancers. <laughs> That's right. She's kind of cool. <laughs> right? Yeah. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah I'm such a dirtbag. <laughs> Yeah, and then you're going, have I seen her boobs? Yeah, maybe. Um, part of me still wants to. Now, speaking of people whose boobs we did see, um, I'm going to point to Katrina Bowden as Shelby. Yeah. Best na- known for being Allison. Uh, Sh- Shelby in this movie. And again, um, for those of you at home, this is not a point that you want any of your children of any age walking in on is one of the scenes with Shelby explaining why something happened because uh, it's an awkward awkward conversation um she was in she was allison in 2010's tucker and dale versus evil which is a much much better movie than this oh by miles it's i mean that is chariots of fire oh yes uh (laughs) yeah i don't know why i went to the weird British marathon movie. Um, but yeah, it like... That was actually an Australian movie, but still, that's okay. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all... that yeah, I haven't was... seen Chariots of Fire in 30 years. No, nor has anyone. Yeah. No one has. No, no. It, it's before Mel Gibson went crazy. So yeah. People... Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, before Sugar Tits. It was pre-Sugar Tits. And... Yeah, pre-Sugar Tits. <laughs> so... That's how, how you measure time now. Um, yes. It's P.S. I'm pretty sugar tits. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah Tucker Dahl versus Evil, much better, and much better. And and she's she's kind of like I think Katrina Bowden is a very pretty young lady. Um, mm-hmm. She's fine in Tucker and Dale versus Evil. She's not very good in this. 
No. And, and there's one other movie that I would uh, arguably say she's actually worse in. Is it Hold Your which Breath? Which is... No, it's 2008's Sex Drive, where she appears as Miss Tasty. And that movie uh, is burned into my brain for a scene where people talk about giving someone a Cleveland steamer. <laughs> well done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, All right. It's it's, uh, it's a road trip movie, a teen coming of age movie. There's uh, sex with Amish people, and uh, yeah, chat about uh, taking a dump on someone's chest during sex. Um, but hey, to each his own. You know, that's that's just a good weekend. Yeah, yeah. Look, if you get out the other side without a, without a new tattoo, I think you're doing okay. I mean, can, can we uh, talk about that scene? Can we just get the this awfulness out of the way? <laughs> can, can we can we get to the fr- get to the point of Josh cut off his penis because something came out of my vagina. Yeah, is that what we're going to talk about? Well, there's this. W- <laughs> so there's this weird thing in the movie where it's like, well, the the piranhas bit her and somehow laid an egg in her, or did a did a piranha swim up her her. Woo-hoo. I look. I think. Look to me. I think the the piranha either went in through the outdoor, uh-huh. or uh, or yeah, look, swam up a who. I think that it actually went in through the outdoor. If you know what I'm saying, I, I do know. Which what is you're why, it, which is why it made her vomit because obviously it was in their intestinal tract, and oh. then somehow through through the miracle of feminine plumbing, somehow. <laughs> made its way into her vagina without killing her. Right, right. That all seems medically feasible. Yeah, yeah. Because, because you know, the the internal organs of uh, of the human female are complete mystery. Well, and also there's a lot of room to just wiggle around. It's not all yeah, packed apparently together. Apparently so. You know? No, no. That's, yeah, that's yeah. the interesting thing about women, is that they have uh, hollow bones like birds, and that their intestines are like two feet long instead of you know two miles or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but the, everything's connected, <laughs> right? So it doesn't matter what. Just it, <laughs> a lot of people don't know this, but women have an open circulatory system like a like a grasshopper. Yeah, that's exactly. It. It's amazing to behold. It really, really it's is. A, and mi- no, nothing will kill them. <laughs> nothing, right? Well, because well, all right. So she because she's sick and she's like, I think I'm dying. I want to. I don't want to die a virgin. So because she's a she's on a real cock hunt in this movie, and mm. well, you know, there is a conversation uh, about uh, you know busting a cherry, which you know what that's the sign of quality cinema, and that's the point I realized. Oh, this movie is just going to be garbage. Okay, okay, I'm now it, I'm. Prepared. It took that long. It literally took that long for you to realize this. Uh, you know, when Gary Busey at the very beginning yelled like, holy hot baby shits, I was like, mm, maybe this is okay. That seems like I can get behind a movie where the, this is happening. And and even up to and including the point where they accidentally explode a cow by lighting its farts on fire. I was like, eh, I'm still kind of on board. But weir- <laughs> weirdly, it yes, it was the point where all of that coupled with, I need to have a boy in my vagina, toot sweet. <laughs> I was like, eh, yes. this is not good. <laughs> this is no. this feels like a movie written by the guys who wrote Feast. And <laughs> No, I, I think it's written by the guys that wrote Feast 2, Sloppy Seconds. Yes, all of them. They're the, the, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Feast boys. Yes. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's that's just wrong. And, and look, you know what? I, I I can't talk about any more about who's in this movie. I think we should uh, break with tradition and just go straight into our first impressions. First impressions count. Yeah. So, I mean, it looks. Uh, how do I want to phrase this? All right. This. This is. I, I, I love that this movie is so bad. It is. You. You can't even get words out. You. There are no words. The fact to to like hone in. <laughs> the, the, the fact 
that this movie was leaning so hard into the 3D and didn't bother to ask the question, do you think these special effects will look okay in 2D? Yeah, no. <laughs> and they no. look terrible. They are yeah. atrocious CGI in this movie. I, yeah. Killer Fish has more convincing piranha <laughs> than piranha 3 double D. Yeah. Uh, 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 well, look, there's a point in time where uh, a piranha that has jumped out of the water to attack uh, Daniel Panabaker and it's lying there bleeding. And I swear to God, it is a glove puppet because you can see the guy's arm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, and that, that shitty Nightmare on Elm Street parody. It's like, how dare you? Oh. You get that name yes. right out of your mouth. Oh. You know what, that that was a, uh, how far can we push uh, Panna Baker into being almost nude? We're going to show you the top of her thigh in the water. Yeah. We're going to show you her shoulders. We're going to show you her feet. We're going to show you a head down angle, but not quite naked because, you know, she had as many clothes on as she could get in that bath scene. There was right. no chance. Andy Webb was going to accidentally take a picture of her boobs. Her performance is just brought to you by OxyContin. I mean, she... <laughs> She is so checked out in this movie. And uh, as well, she should be. This movie oh, is beneath yeah. her, and she she shows you in every scene how much beneath her the movie is. Uh, oh, see, look, I'm going to come out and say, before we talk about Crazy Gary Busey, because I love Crazy Gary Busey, the, you know, you said that it took to the took up until the point where they're talking about uh, busting a cherry for you to check out. As soon as I saw the banner on the screen that said Cross Lake, Merkin County, I went, that's it. Merkin County. Yeah, that was real stupid. You're right. <laughs> I, I, I went, you know what? It's a pubic wig joke. Uh, that's I'm, I'm done. For, there is no coming up from that point. Uh, for me, like, Cinema Judge Bo at that point was like, you know what? We're going to allow it. But. <laughs> <laughs> but this better be but, going somewhere. And it yeah, wasn't. And, and it and, wasn't. And, no, no, you know that th that was almost a smart joke, right? You know, th there was a bit of you know a bit of a oh for those of you at home that you know actually knew what a merkin was, it was a bit funny. <laughs> and then you went, oh, hang on a minute, no, it's crazy Gary Beauty Busey with a farting cow corpse. Yeah, yeah, and I, you're right. I love a crazy Gary Busey. One of my favorite movies of all time, inexplicably, is Silver Bullet. Oh. I, it's not a very good movie, but I love it. And I love oh, him in it. Look, in, he's the only thing that saves that movie. I'm going to say it, because Silver Bullet is not high on my list of, of werewolf movies. You're not but wrong. Crazy Gary, <laughs> but Crazy Gary Busey, I look, he, he, could be, he could be selling me Merkins, and I would watch it. There, and you see, you go, you got to put it on your junk, <laughs> and it feels so good. It's just, just like wiggle around. This one's made out of horse here, so it's a bit itchy. Uh, it's just like I'm I talking about the cream. The, the cream is forty percent horse hair. <laughs> it's just, or it tucks right in, right in your taint. You got to get it in there so it looks real. It'll, it'll yeah. blend into the ass hair you got. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like an ass weave, and you can, you can take that to the bank. See, Crazy Gary selling Merkins. I'm on. Yeah. Fucking there. A hundred percent. So, I and I love I love seeing uh, Crazy Gary Busey, but speaking of first impressions, one thing that tells you right off the bat is we are not spending a lot of money on our cameos. It is no. the director's dad and Gary Busey who will show up to any movie in Los Angeles County <laughs> if, if you bought yes. beer. Yeah, so... And bosses. Right. Beer, cigarettes. Hey, you, you say you got Marlboros? Do you get reds? Because I need reds. All right, I'll be there in five I, minutes. Yeah. Should I wear pants? Is it children? Do I have to wear pants? Let me answer my own question. I am not going to have pants when I arrive. <laughs> you have them titty girls. Give me the cigarettes. <laughs> but, oh, okay. but yeah, so he's a delight. But... I, I, like I said, when you see him and Clue Gulliger in the same scene, you're like, you know, the the labor dollar spent on this scene are about twenty seven fifty, and that is yeah, that is yeah. two decimal places. Yeah, and you know what? That was for the water to fill up the fake swamp. Right, right. Like, That's all it was. <laughs> you just keep giving me Bud Lights, I will fill this pool up. <laughs> 
Don't worry about it. You, I call this the Busey filter. <laughs> it's better than Mr. Oh. Coffee. <laughs> and he don't drip. Well, it it used to didn't. <laughs> hey, build up some pressure. Fucking fun to put out a fire with this thing. I mean, first thing in the morning. Yeah. I mean, it is it is something to behold. But by about, but say, by the- 2 p.m., uh, there's a little bit of a dribble. Yeah. More like a sprinkler, but still. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see me do the helicopter? <laughs> It's it's like you you know them nozzles on on a on a garden hose is the one that sprays a lot of grass at once. Uh, that's the <laughs> that's the two p.m. <laughs> oh, Gary, crazy Gary. <laughs> See the, the 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 fact that we've spent like ten minutes talking about crazy Gary just says that we don't want to talk about the rest of this movie, and I don't. It's um, it's kind of the best part. <laughs> it is, although. Uh, the whole like piranha laying eggs inside a cow corpse uh, uh, as they uh, and they get like pooped out with air pressure. Well, and also I didn't they, fully understand that. Yeah. Well, they they kind of like push in on the belly, which apparently it's just so ate up with these piranha eggs that it just immediately pops one out, just and out comes a piranha. <laughs> And the, again, at this point, I'm like, ah, all right. This is, I mean, it's stupid, but it's, hey, I can yeah. watch stupid. I often do. Yes. It, it's not bad. And, and you know, if they if they got into the scene stuff, wiggle around inside the little embryonic egg, I would have gone, eh. But no, there was no money for that. But what you know what there was money for? A, an incredible exploding fart joke, which I I thought was hilarious. <laughs> I don't know that I would go that far. I I was again. I, I, I laughed too much. I laughed too much. <laughs> again, this was another cinematic judge bow. Like, all right, I'll allow it, but this better get somewhere quick. And and then fast on the heels of that, of course. After right after a big cow explodes, it's like, well, this may just be dumb enough to work. You know? Yeah. And then we get Daniel Panabaker showing up to take over this water park that is just full of titties because David Keckner, who is her stepfather and inherited 51% of this water park, don't worry, you don't have to think about that yes. again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And you know what? I think David Keckner is everyone's stepfather. Honestly, the best people in this movie are Christopher Lloyd and Dave Keckner. Are the are the oh, two Christopher best parts Lloyd. of this film? You know, like real, like Gary Busey, Crazy Gary Busey is always kind of fun for a lark. But in terms of just like, mm. oh no, these people know how to deliver a scene. Mm. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you, you quite smartly skipped over the commercial for the big wet that Keckner is doing. I mean, it's. <laughs> I said titties. Oh, yeah, but you missed out the important parts. Like, it's time to get wet again. And, most importantly, Double D's swim free at the big wet. <laughs> yeah. Double D's swim free is. is... That is the height of humor for Piranha Three Double D. Like, yeah, it yeah. loves that joke, and it's it's fine. Yeah. I mean, but again, it's not enough of that. It's not like a, a wacky titty comedy because if it had been that, I probably could have gotten on board. You know, I mm, look, but it's not- I've seen Ski School. I'm not proud of it, but I watched it. Yeah, uh, uh, there's any number of movies from the '80s that uh, teen. Co- you know what? I've I've seen Sex Drive. <laughs> Uh, right and, right and, and it, it, it's it's a titty comedy and it's okay i'm not proud of it i watched it um sure it didn't have water certified strippers um which is apparently important um but you know what if the movie had kept on you know just going no no titties and you know what we went straight from obviously um daniel panabak just going no no this is all wrong and i'm unhappy to the adult swimming area <laughs> yeah and just Oh my god! Right, and it's just like a hundred percent fully nude. I mean, you're getting full frontal nudity in this film. They've got what? What do you call it? The beaver cam? Uh, I believe it's called coochie cam. The coochie cam. I apologize. Um, to the beaver cam ink. Um, it is which is a camera mounted behind the the ladder on the adult pool, so that when women are getting out of the pool, you get a tight shot on the coochie. 
Yes. I mean, um, again, if that's okay. what the movie is, all right. If it's a movie about her trying to save, like, turn this wacky adult park around, and then the movie is she learns to loosen up a little bit, they learn how to run a business, and then they come together to fight the piranha. See? Much smarter movie, and, and you know what? You know, maybe a bit of a fun soundtrack behind it, and a lot of scar, uh, maybe yeah. some, yeah, a lot, lot of scar. And actually, what this really needed was, uh, I think, a local PTA group to uh, to protest outside, right? With some some little old like bitty woman who just loosens up and you know lets her hair down, and all of a sudden she's a sexy, sexy babe. Um, <laughs> sure, but at the end, at the end of the movie, when she's fighting the piranha, that's when like one of the piranha like yanks the clip out of her hair and she's like ooh, and then another ooh. bites off the buttons on her jacket and her boobs kind of spill out she's like oh my goodness <laughs> see see i could so much we, of a better movie i could we can write this movie right now though we could remake piranha 3 double d and it would be a much better movie because it would be much, mostly a teen titty better. comedy and then the piranha would show up at the end yes all right well <laughs> yeah that, that, that's right I mean, are we done here? Can we just get to work? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Can we just can we just do it? <laughs> but and move on and just uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so Daniel Panabaker is naturally like horrified by all this, and and then her miscreant friends all show up, which are uh, Katrina Bowden, who is trying to get laid, um, Ashley, mm. who uh, has been laid a bunch and just wants to keep fucking. Mm. Then well, you know, they, there's a whole lot of slut shaming with Ashley in the movie, and I, I for one, I'm a little disappointed. Even the piranha slut shamed her because they didn't eat her; they just chewed off her face. The, yeah, that's true. It was weird. It was like, are they keeping her for later? Is this like a yeah, bear movie? You know I, I, yeah, I, I think there was a bit of, ooh, no, that's bad meat. If, if this had been a bear movie, Richard Jekyll would have been buried by the piranha and then re- revealed <laughs> himself to not be dead, and then the piranha would just eat him. <laughs> Oh, see, that could have been a great 3D bit. Out of the dirt. Uh-huh. <gasps> yeah. Big chew marks in him. Oh, add a bear into this. You know what? Bear in the lake swimming through the pipes to chase the piranha. Or it's a, it's one of them sci-fi movies and it's Bear-ana. Oh, Bear-ana. <laughs> now, I'm, oh. now I'm on board. That Bear-ana boobs. Uh-huh. PTA, PTA and... And closing the beaches. Gary Busey. And closing the beaches. Yeah, look, this ain't no Amity Beach. Yeah. <laughs> this ain't no fucking Amity yeah, Beach. Yeah, you say bear, people go, huh? Where? You say Barana. You say. <laughs> there goes the 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of the 4th of July, which is a great celebration, um, I quietly celebrated when I saw Christopher Lloyd, but then quickly realized he wasn't going to save the movie. He's in it about five minutes more than we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where. They, they, because they're like, hey, weird stuff is happening around here. Well, I guess we should say, like, in the first, what kind of sets off uh, all the action is that uh, we have a, a moment where Daniel Panabaker and, and Katrina Bowden are on a dock and they see a bunch of piranhas jumping up. And it almost, and yeah. this is where she gets the piranha up up in her. Uh, no, no, that's when she's skinny dipping. Oh, earlier. that's right. You're right. Be, 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 <laughs> Fuck. Because there was a question, there was a question I had, which was, is someone mistaking a, a weird fish potentially flying up your butt for your penis an insult or a compliment? You know what? He was so far away from her, it never occurred to me she was, she thought he was, she, she thought he was trying to fuck her at that distance. When she was like, ow, is that you? And it's like, of course not. I mean, what is, <laughs> is he a horse? Maybe you don't know. I more power to him if he is. But... <laughs> right, but then she's right to scream and run. She's gonna split yeah, right in half like that fucking terrifier movie. Yeah, exactly. See, the whole thing is right. If it's got a mind of its own and it's Piranaconda through the water out of his pants, well, he's not wearing pants, but you know, sneaking around the back door. Fucking yeah, run. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You get away from that thing. Even. Yeah, even the mysteries of women's plumbing is not going to save you from uh, apparently a penis that can swim by itself. Uh, I'm trying to think what that movie is. Penisra? Piranus? Piranus? <laughs> or oh, Piranus. Yeah, maybe that's it. Well, actually, that, that, that sounds a bit too like butt-like, like Piranus. Um, well, now we're talking. Now we got a movie. Yeah. <laughs> 
uh, just uh, just a butt with tape. I don't, I don't know why I turned into a porn producer all of a sudden. Now, now we got a movie. We put down some plastic, put up a camera. We're good to go. <laughs> no, it just holds her off. She'll be fine. <laughs> hey, hey, it's all water soluble. I put that. I make sure that that's that's the piranha's promise. <laughs> No, everything's got teeth. Her, her butt, her pussy, her boobs, everything. She's just eating everything. And then the dick monster comes and it's, it's trying to eat her back. And they fall in love and we have really up close, like, piranha genital sex. It's going to be everything that the shape of water wasn't. Listen, yeah, there's, there's got to be talking. <laughs> right. You can't sign language. Do it in my ass. Talking and explicit sex. You kept asking, hey, how does that fish man fuck? We're gonna show ya. Yeah. We'll make a million dollars. Yes. Yeah, the, you know, uh, the, the Shape of Water, the Triple X parody. Oh, you know that's out there. It, that has to be out there. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what, I will I will verify that. Um, <laughs> I will confirm or deny by the end of this episode. Um, so, yeah. But. All right, but yeah, so she, during, while they're skinny dipping, she gets the piranha inside her, and then later she uh, has a moment where she is trying to escape the piranha as they're jumping up to eat her with Daniel Panabaker, and sort of alongside that is Ashley and her kind of boy toy are in a van fucking... And in a sex van. Let's be on. Let's be honest, bro. It's a sex van. <laughs> Working on a sex van. Sex van. Uh-uh. Trying to raise some hard love. <laughs> so, so the sex van. Well, you know, the the sex van with the shag carpet and, and uh, there was and, and a really shitty handbrake. Yeah, and the so worst fucking handbrake ever. The sex van rolls into into this lake. And where there are piranhas, and of course the they get at, and so yes, be, because with, what was his name? I can't remember his fucking name. But he was handcuffed to the sex van table. What I don't know why you need a table in a sex van, and that's what and that that's where you get your first three D uh, really shitty effect. The, yeah, in the 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 piranha look really rubbery in this, and I mean they kind of oh. do in in the first one. But well, in the first one, that they look like really cheap animatronics. You know, like you know the toy fish that you can buy that just like the tail like flips so it looks like it swims. They look like they've just like put rubber skins over the top of those in the first one. This one, flat out, if they're not CG, they're fucking glove puppet. Yes, yes, they they're really shitty. And, and so um, we've got like two missing kids. The uh, th- then Daniel Panabaker and and Katrina Bowden, uh, who is now sick, she's like, I don't feel so good, and this is where she kind of runs off on her own to fuck the dude with her her. Well, see, hey, you've skipped over a bit that I, I just went really movie. You- you've just sunk so low. So initially, when she goes, oh, I don't feel so well, while they're standing up and talking, and she vomits everywhere, and and the guy that, as we learned later, was called Big Dave, <laughs> yeah, runs <laughs> runs up and does a double foot stomp into the puddle of vomit yeah i mean i've kind of glossed over i guess big dave here the whole arc of his character is that he fucks a pool filter and stomps in vomit until he saves the day the, the, yes the, thanks big dave uh, just, uh, the, the, that that part of the story is just like someone went no we need something funny <laughs> give me someone to laugh at no, and they went. They went. Let's find a rather large, I'd say, Hispanic man, um, and just throw him in there to do really gross stuff. Right here, here's a fat guy who is going to just straight up fuck this pool filter, and we're going to cut to it a couple yeah. of times in the movie because it's funny? Question mark. Yeah, he he is this movie's booger. <laughs> yeah, except booger is way more likable. Yes. <laughs> surprisingly slightly less of a sex deviant <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> not fucking a pool that's for sure and yeah <laughs> anyway so uh, th- so that's kind of big dave's arc and we'll catch up to him at the end and and so yeah katrina bowden has gone off to to fuck her guy uh daniel pinnebaker has confronted dave keckner and is like hey i think there's something screwy going on and he's like you're full of shit 
<laughs> essentially. Don't you worry, pretty little head. Right. <laughs> like I, I run this. I've got fifty one percent of this place. I run it. You're you have no yeah. say in anything. And just 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 run away. And, oh, and by the way, boobs. Just um, you know, we haven't talked about them in probably a good two minutes. And this movie does not let you go two minutes without showing you bare brain. Sure. Yeah. Here here's some more boobies. Um, just kind of in the background and, and, and hither and thither in this film. Um, yeah. as, or, uh, unless, unless there's a transition and then there's a montage of, <laughs> right. Every, yeah. Uh, at least a couple of times in this movie, we're just going to get right. Just the montage of partying and boobs. Yeah. And just, just in case you forgot what this movie was actually about. <laughs> sure. You're right. Don't, don't forget that where this movie's blood has all rushed to. And, and so at this point, uh, there's this crazy, stupid love triangle between Daniel Pennebaker, her ex-boyfriend, who is a cop, who is on the take, (laughs) which is, again, this is the dumbest, maybe the dumbest thing about this movie, if you say it out loud. Dave Keckner, the owner of a water park, is paying off a local deputy to not investigate his shady doings at this water park. For, and you know yeah and the sh- oh, and the shady doings is he's got a drill and he is pumping water from an illegal well that's tapped into an underground lake so he can save money on uh, on the utilities and not pay big water for, <laughs> right for filling filling up the water park yes Th- this is his grand scheme and and also what has put them in jeopardy because uh, now Dan- Danielle Pennebaker decides that she's gonna go with the deputy and this guy named Barry who's all clearly has a crush on her and she's just like oh, oh Barry why don't you come help me change clothes and we can talk about your problems mm. and he's just like oh no I I really want to talk to you about something <laughs> but. He- He's, he's just like a, a complete milk toast through the whole film, of course. But so yeah, it, like, he he does a lot of standing still because he can't contain his erection. Right. It's just every time he sees her, he's just like, oh, oh you know, I can't stand up. Don't, don't. Yeah. And so these three knuckleheads dr- drive to Christopher Lloyd's house uh, because they have seen his YouTube. Yes, you do. Yeah, right. If hey, look, if he lived close, I would do the same thing. You know, hey, what's going on, Christopher Lloyd? I told you, I'm calling the police. (laughs) Get off my property. Don't have a time machine. Right. Even I don't have Michael J. Fox's number. (laughs) Would you like to watch a video about a baby with diarrhea laughing? I was in Theodore Rex. I don't know if he was in Theodore Rex. He probably was not. Um... Uh, you know what he doesn't know sure he, he's done he so many movies care. now he, and, and he's always again he holds it down like he's just he's an actor he does an actor's job and anyway but he so he tells him like you know he's the, his character now is that he's obsessed with the the number of people who have seen his youtube videos about how piranha are one day going to involve evolve to walk on land and uh but he has also been largely discredited by the scientific community because of these views about the prehistoric piranha that he discovered. So, uh, yeah, which is just fucking crazy talk. He, I mean, the title of his book is that, "They Walk right, like, Among Us." He, you you discover prehistoric piranha. You're a famous person now. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Christopher Lord is naturally great, and he he basically tells him. Hey, these fish, who knows where they could go? Um, so it, it, it's a real shrug of an explanation of like, well, I guess they made it to your pool. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, with a demonstration about how they could actually headbutt their way through steel sheeting. Right. For no apparent reason. If, if they're that hungry, they will smash their head through a steel sheet to eat a frog. Right. And, and that's... Uh, kind of important later sort of it, it explains how they get through these grates to get to the pool yeah the, these grates that appear to be made of plastic right so they're so uh daniel pennebaker and and her buddies are like holy shit we got to get back to the water park and warn everybody that them piranhas are coming and so <laughs> so they head that way, and this is kind of about the time we discover that 
uh, that that the cop is in on it and is like, you know, Dave, David Ugh. Kickner pays him off to be like, hey, you didn't see nothing with no piranhas, right? And he's like, guess not, boss. Yeah, and really, how much money can a can a water park make? Like, is it enough to to pay? Because that looked like a lot of money. I mean, unless they're all singles, that looked like a lot of money, right? And if <laughs> let's say that word of the piranhas gets out. And no matter what that water park is making, it is gone. Mm. Like, your money is best spent yeah. piranha-proofing your pool and not paying off the cop to uh, lie about piranhas. Yeah. And, look, as we all know, once you pay a hooker, that's it. There's no reason. Right! So, you know, he's he's got a swimming pool full of, like, naked people that he's all paid for that's just money down the drain not a not a good business no man. not a good dis- businessman. no man. so they're gonna have like you know this big fourth of july celebration and uh they're you know david keckner uh they what tie him up is that how all this goes down i forget why daniel panabaker can't stop it like they're they're stuck in the water room or something no, just no one believes her. <laughs> he's just, he's just that, that's the whole 51% conversation. It's just like, no, it's 51%. Fuck you. And, and then the pool just opens and she's like running around going, oh no, everyone's going to die. But no one believes uh, her. Because he, uh, Kekner keeps going, did you see it? Have you seen it? Right. Okay, right. And that's when the piranha swim in and start munching people in. And it's just not very interesting. Oh, wait, before, I guess no, we should say, they, the, the, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Yeah, were you going to say, uh, oh, by the way, there's a montage of boobs? Because that's usually what happens in this movie when we can't remember what else happened. <laughs> I wasn't going to talk about the montage of boobs. I was going to say, for no good reason, Bing Rames and David Hasselhoff have shown up to this movie. <sighs> David Hasselhoff, it's just, I don't understand any of that story, other than the fact that they went, uh, we're at a pool, there's water, who's... who's Who's a has-been celebrity that'll turn up to, like, an opening of a sandwich um, <laughs> that has something to do with water? And they went, that's a lot. Ving Rhames I get, right? Because he's a callback. Sure. He's a callback to, I th- you know, and that, the, the, honestly, the stuff with Ving Rhames is pretty cool. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. But the, but flabby, just flappity, uh, probably drunk David Hasselhoff. Not not good. Not good at all. Yeah, it's, it doesn't amount to anything. It's not all that interesting um the the and look to 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 go behind the curtain and throw stuff across my desk um we did mention that this would have been that much better if lee majors had played that role. yes yes infinitely better it would have been it would have been so much more charming for sure yes and so ving rames does show up uh with paul Shear, uh comedian funny man Famous funny man, Paul Shear, um, as his sort of assistant and Bing Rames has no legs and, uh, because they got chewed off in the first one, but he has shotgun legs. So when the piranhas roll in, he kind of shoots them and it, it, right. It, if the whole movie were that kind of stuff, it would be fine. Um, yes. Yeah. Titanium legs. (laughs) Right. Um, that, 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 that. That the, the the piranha attempt to chew through, but of course they can't chew through titanium. And what I did learn is, of course, that you can shoot shotgun legs at piranha in the water, and they explode like blood filled water balloons. Yes, I mean, I mean it's it's very it's over the top. It's really crazy, um, but not like after the first one. The first one has such a high bar of gory insanity. Mm. You know, that was kind of what made that movie is the last, like, 20, 30 minutes of it where, you know, people's hair are getting caught up in boat propellers and their scalps are yanked off. And yeah, was, yeah it's, there's so much going on. And, you know, there's some really good effects. And in this one, it looks like they went to the dollar store and said, can we get all the Halloween props that are just like hands and feet and stuff like that and throw them in the pool with some red food dye? Yeah, it, it really is a lot of uh, like just floating rubber hands and feet and stuff and it's oh it's awful Uh yeah i mean they even go to the you know like the piranha being like like predators just like the the whole swimming past and like but five minutes ago they were swarming and like ate anything that you know that was standing still and says oh no don't do that now i think this is the point during the panic um where uh we the movie goes you know what montages of boobs aren't gonna work 
Um, I think we need to switch gears. Let's go with a woman screaming and running with giant boobs. That will help distract people. Yeah, man. Are, so is th- this is the one leading up to the Kekner decapitation? Yeah. Yeah, so it's just... Yeah. No, th- there's two others before the Kekner... <laughs> Before the before the Kekner decapitation, that's a hard word to say. Um, where they've just like everyone's screaming and running, and there's you know the bit with the little little ranger kid, and everyone's going, "Oh, I'm gonna die!" Blah, 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 and just cut to a woman running with boots, sure, flapping <laughs> everywhere, and, and then we we get to the Kekner death. Now I'm gonna let you describe this in your own words. What happens? All here. right, so. He decides, because of all the chaos, it's time to get out of Dodge. So he runs to his office and grabs a metal lunchbox full of cash that apparently is his fortune, which... Yeah, I don't. Yeah, is it his stash? Is it his his getaway it, money? It, it can't be the day's takings. It surely cannot just be that. It is takings. generously thirty seven dollars worth of loose bills. Yeah, oh, at best. Yes, and so he jumps on a golf cart, and as as people all are, after running over a small girl, yeah. Like, like he has a really awkward interaction with a small girl who is obviously um you know like in shock over uh, i think her mother uh who is chewed up and bloody and he did oh i'm sorry it's not my fault and throws like like three singles at right. her which um, is 10 percent of jumps, his net worth which is bin. ain't nothing yeah yeah and, and but jumps in the golf cart and then runs over them both um and then proceeds to a cup. yeah so he's taken off in this golf cart with the, the lunchbox of money in the seat beside him, you know, kind of cackling to himself about getting away scot-free when, like, where is he going to go? <laughs> about 14 miles yeah. with today's haul. And <laughs> and there is just a streamer, uh, one of those flag streamers strung across the, the pathway. It's kind of fallen. And yeah. He goes through it, and you see that he's been decapitated, but it's one of those gags where as he passes through it, he looks fine. Mm. And then he, what the card stops, and blood just explodes out of this stump. And his head then flies through the air, lands in in, uh, a woman's hands, but she's holding his face between her... (laughs) No, no. Okay, sorry. His head lands fair square in that woman. Okay, I, I didn't know if she like no hands it, like involved. if if there were any hands at all involved. But yeah, so the only hands were were holding like was her hands holding her own breast. Right. So, and he just gets clobbered by her boobs for a second. <laughs> I think is the 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 scientific term for it. And then... Yeah, yeah, I think clobbered is, is the right <laughs> word for it. And then she just tosses this decapitated head into the pool where we see, via the coochie cam, the piranhas eat his face. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and look, I think all of us have considered um, the nature of our death at any one time. I have decided without a shadow of a doubt, that's how I want to go. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I guess there's that last moment of awareness of like, oh, boobs. And then <laughs> out go the lights. Yeah, out go the lights and you're, you're eaten completely by piranha. <laughs> yes. On coochie cam. So you, so you can show it at the funeral. Yeah, it, yeah it's it's very dumb. And, and so meanwhile, Daniel Panabaker's plan to stop all of this, thankfully, is, <laughs> is that she's got to get... Um, she's going to try to stop up the drains or, uh, but, uh, or, or help people out of the pool. I don't know why she doesn't just go to the water room herself, but she sends her milk toast boyfriend who will eventually be her cuckolded husband, Barry to the water room. And he's like, look, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And she's like, just flip all the switches up and that'll do it. And he's like, okay. Yeah. There's surely Barry worked at the water park and apparently has worked at the water park for an extended period of time. Despite the fact that he can't swim, um, she had to explain to him how levers work. <laughs> yes. They're either all the way down 
or all the way up. And if they go all the way up, it will force drain in, in difference to, I don't know what, normal uh-huh. drain, um, the pool. And that will save Yes, it, it, the super drain buttons. And... Yes. Yeah, so... The flush. <laughs> <laughs> so, she is trying to help people out of the pool. And as she is doing so, she gets kind of sucked down to the drain because uh, Barry does, in fact go to the water room and flip the oh when he yes on his way to uh, the the water room however he runs into big oh, dave no. who had been attacked by a piranha while fucking the drain and because we don't want to repeat yeah. a piranha biting a dick joke in this movie uh because we're it's a creative artistic film instead oh, this yeah. piranha is stuck firmly in big dave's ass yeah. so <laughs> big dave asks barry to yank the piranha out of his ass which he does which leaves this big bloody explosion on the back of big dave's pants for the rest of the film which is maybe the most disturbing thing in this movie oh that and the fact that if you remember earlier um we had a piranha go all the way up through someone's intestines sure it was a mysterious woman's intestines and maybe big dave is you know considering his diet maybe a little backed up which is why the piranha couldn't get through but he rips a chunk of big dave's ass out and the piranha has it in his mouth and then yeah big dave spends the rest of the movie with his pants half down covered in blood and it's yeah it's shocking and (laughs) I, I, it it, it really is like i said it's the, the most uncanny thing in this movie um and uh so after he flips all the switches daniel panabaker is sucked down the drain big dave is left behind in the water room with a bunch of chlorine and he's like you know what <laughs> ain't no fish gonna treat big dave like that i'm gonna fuck these piranhas up so he just starts dumping it, it, was it chlorine because it seemed to react like petrol or possibly nitroglycerin well, i i assume chlorine explodes or chlorine gas explodes i don't know look i'm no scientologist i don't understand <laughs> no. uh how how physics works but yes. um i i guess that's the implication it, it again this movie doesn't explain itself so how would you ever know but eh, and I'm doing a whole lot of fan fiction to make this movie make some kind of sense. But so uh, Big Dave, it wants to blow up the piranha. Um, the the sheriff, dude, the deputy that was Daniel Panabaker's ex-boyfriend and still wanted to get in her pants, um, sees her struggling to get out of the, the vortex created by this train. And she's like, help me. And he's like, no, fuck that. If you die, then nobody will know that I knew about the piranha and I can be a hero. And so he... Yeah, now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you right there. For me, the fact that he went, I'm not getting in that fucking water full of piranha, a smart move. Certainly an absolute dick in terms of being a human. But fuck that. Why, why, why was she getting in and out of the water so much that was full of piranha? Right, that's hey, what? that's her journey, not her, not yours. You know, she's she's <laughs> that's exactly it. She is making decisions for herself, and and yeah. Uh, but yeah, so he just leaves her to it. You know, just kind of washes his hands of the whole affair, and come what may, the chips will fall. And so he leaves her to die. Barry shows up. And couldn't there's a, the whole thing about how he can't swim, but he dives in after her anyway. Um and. Then the water's draining out. Uh, the wait, the deputy then proceeds to try to help some skeletons out of the water as the water drains. Yeah, it, yeah, just picking up bloody chunks, just calling them all uh, by Panabaker's name. Just, ah! Right, like I could save Despite you. The fact that they're like ten, yeah, they're they're like ten feet away, um, you know, and then she's being carried out, and that that's that, that's probably the point where we find out that Barry really doesn't know how CPR works. Yeah, he just makes out with her until she coughs. Yeah, which is also yeah. my and move. Look, I'm not one to kink shame, but yeah, well, you know, till she coughs up a whole lot of water, <laughs> yeah. and you know, and, oh, I saved you. They, they call that a reverse enema. Show me. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, considering how many things to do with butts we've seen in this movie, uh, why not? Yeah, so um, she she comes back to life thanks to the power of horniness. <laughs> <laughs> and Yes. And then the deputy is like, holy shit, you're alive? And just a, as we're facing off with, you know, our young lovers and the, the villainous deputy, 
uh, Big Dave, who has dumped a bunch of chlorine down these drains, lights up a joint, takes a couple of puffs, and then tosses it down into this chlorine-soaked whatever. The drain uh, thing? Right. He tosses the what's-it into the who's-its, and the next thing you know, there's an explosion. And... <laughs> Yes, make make rocket go now. <laughs> right, very much so. And yeah, and, and piranha and body parts and everything just start flying up in the air. It's the end of Caddyshack all over again. Um, there's a whole lot of like uh, ball pit balls apparently coming from. Stuff yeah, like that. there's a lot of that stuff. A lot of lo- rubber hands floating around. Um, it, it it's a real mess. And during that, the trash spear that we saw Barry with at the beginning of the movie is blown into the air. And it starts hurtling down towards our deputy villain and strikes him directly in the face as he looks up into the air at it. Um, And it's, again, if this were in 3D, maybe it'd look okay, but it's real shitty CGI and it looks kind of crappy. Yeah. Um, But it's, uh, you know, at least their heart's in the right place. It's a thing. And, you know, look, if nothing else, we got a little bit of closure on that story. Sure. So the the mean ex-boyfriend is dead. Barry uh, then is free to um, have sexual relations with Daniel Panabaker uh, without the threat of getting beat up and or being cuckolded by the deputy. Mm. And yes. uh, although I still think there's a potential threat of uh, a piranha coming out of it. A hundred percent. She was scratching at that bite. I was pretty sure that a piranha was going to come out of it um yeah and then the movie kind of ends our pre the pre-credits marathon um <laughs> before that you get another bit with uh uh uh, bu- 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 uh christopher lloyd Hasselhoff. no well that too oh yeah that's right yo oh, where yeah. christopher lloyd is like hey remember that crazy shit i said about them being able to walk on land they can and Daniel Panabaker is like, I know. And then you see some fish flopping their way onto land, and one of them eats a kid that Daniel, that David uh, has a, 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 a red-headed yeah. kid. <laughs> a red-headed kid. A little ranger who clearly has no soul, but has a lot of bloody soul. Right, there's a whole gag about Hasselhoff calling him a little ginger bastard and stuff, and... <laughs> it's it's you know the funniest thing about this movie is david hesselhoff kind of loving this kid and also acknowledging the fact that he, he's a little ginger bastard um so that's pretty fun yeah. but uh and then yeah like seven minutes of credits uh, credits and bloopers uh, a promo for Hasselhoff's next movie The Fish Hunter right. B-roll um, of, of ladies floating on water there's some of that yeah uh, yeah. In, ca- in case we all forgot because it had been a good five minutes before we saw any naked flesh yeah it's I mean it's it, this movie is just shit it's just wall to wall shit <laughs> It's terrible. There is nothing, nothing. There is nothing good about this movie, except for obviously um, uh, predicting the way that I will end my days, and I'm okay with that. Ash, but you know everything else. Yeah, everybody's got to go somehow, you know. Um, it's exactly. But, but it's oh. but it's a terrible, terrible movie. I mean, it's a it's a movie that even as, like it sounds kind of funny, clowning on it a little bit. It is not a fun movie to watch at all, unless you've got somebody with you that no. is like, we've got a twelve pack of beer in the fridge. It's gone by the time the movie's over. Let's do this. Yeah. That is the only and yeah. Let, let, because you're not you're not watching it for the for the nudity because well the internet um, right and it's just brief and, glimpses of boobs anyway like who jerks off like that in you know eight <laughs> millisecond hey, they're, sessions they're, um as i believe uh one of my previous guests want to say premature ejaculation is no that's very matter. true but that's not even premature that's lightning speed you know <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> Sometimes you just need to get the job I, done. Just, whoa, I guess so, man. I've never had that talent to just be able to lightly graze my penis and immediately ejaculate. That's spontaneous ejaculation. Yeah. Just, then again, you know, I don't... Maybe that's some sort of weird tantric thing. Who knows what's going on at night, too, you know? I don't know what's happening. Well, that's it. Yeah, maybe he's got rubber sheets for a whole different <laughs> right, reason. Right. But yeah, I it's it's just not a movie you can ever recommend to anyone in good conscience. You know, it's it's just a terrible, terrible no, movie. No, 
It is. And for anyone that's listened to this and thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a crack. Um, let me just say that you see a piranha cough up the stump of a man's penis. Yeah, but you, you see that in the first one too. And it looks way better. Yeah, but I, I honestly, it looks way better. And really, in, in this one, to... <laughs> The amount of like, blood and everything else that goes in it, that was probably the goriest scene in the yeah. whole movie. Yeah. And, uh, and it really wasn't that good. Well, and at the scene kind of ends with that dude, like Katrina Bowden looking for him because she can't find him right away. She sees his bloody, or she doesn't see it, but there, you, see, you, the audience, see his bloody dick on the floor. And and the piranha, yeah, yeah, because she stands, she stands on the piranha, and it literally coughs up <laughs> the bloody stump of his face. Yeah, and then her boyfriend appears, looking homicidal with a knife in his hand, and and says, "What the fuck did you do to me?" And I was like, "Is he gonna murder her?" <laughs> yeah, y- you know what came into my mind when I saw that scene straight away. Like, not even there was was not even a, a, a millisecond of hesitation. And it was the end of Sleepaway Camp. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, now that you say that, absolutely. Um, yeah. I, it, yeah. yeah it, it's a real shit show. <laughs> I, it, uh, sorry, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I brought you here through through space and time, and that you had to, you had to do it. Um, you know what? This movie is so bad; it's actually ruined the format of the show. That's how. Bad yeah. It, is. it just. And I hope that you can send me back to a time before you ask me to watch this movie. Well, look, I, I can um, I, I can wipe your memory of all of these events. Unfortunately, uh, it will require you to uh, drive a go-kart through some bunting um, and have your head cut off and land in a set of giant. Worth it. <laughs> I will gladly trade my noggin to never think about this movie again. You have been listening to Witch vs. the Doomsday Clock, a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Come join the rest of the Meat Popsicles in our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash witch versus the doomsday clock. 